Well, my early, my, my fascination with birds really seems to uh, have begun at very, very early age. And uh, possibly the first thing I remember in my life involves a bird. And that experience was uh, looking across a green hay field, probably June, Wisconsin, where everything is just bright green and intense. And a uh, male red-winged blackbird flew across in front of me and was doing a, a display, uh, aerial display. And so this, he had this bright red and yellow echolets on his wings showing intensely. And the bird is pitch black, and the uh, background is all bright green. And that burned into my brain so that I'm sure I can see that to this day. And I think that set in place a uh, need and an interest to be, and need to be around birds and an interest in birds since, and probably also set in place the idea of being an artist or to do something to capture that experience. Well, I uh, went to Quetico Provincial Park in Canada, in Ontario. Um, Probably around uh, 1968 or 69 for the first time, and uh, I was really blown away about the, by the way that it uh, was as as pristine and thick and wonderfully uh, beautiful as it was. Um, it was a uh, almost an exaggeration of everything about the North Country that I grew up in and loved so much. And uh, it was that North Country devoid of any imperfections. And it was a, it's an area of vast lakes and tangled, complicated wet woods and so forth that a guy can only get through by a, a going on a canoe or following between lakes portages that were established hundreds and hundreds of years ago by the uh, Indians that lived there. Uh, it's almost an indescribably wonderful place and full of uh, exciting, beautiful things and danger because, you know, one little slip and you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> so it's got the double-edged sword, which is really fun. Uh, I have traveled there then extensively since then by myself sometimes Sometimes it's one or two people along, and sometimes leading whole classes of college students uh, uh, for eight or nine years before they caught on and told me I couldn't do that anymore and call it an art class. <laughs> but it's been a really big part of my life. It, it has been, a, it has become a metaphor for many aspects of uh, what life is like and the meaning of being a you know, a person in this time in history, uh, and, I, and I don't look at it as being an escapist experience, but as a way to uh, understand the meaning of being here um, in what has become a, a what, my home. I feel more at home there than here, and therefore I can think and feel very clearly. So it's it's a transcendental experience rather than just a Let's go fishing time. The experience of being in Quetical and um, being affected by how it feels to me has been uh, used in the paintings in a way that is, uh, it's a modified experience where I am uh, drawing the paintings based upon what I remember and what impressed me the most. But I am not um, making drawings while I'm there and I'm not uh, making photographs of the place while I'm there and then coming back and uh, relying on those photographs for specific uh, uh, imagery. The uh, paintings are all entirely fictionally made up just as a writer would, um, a, a, you know, a novelist would uh, use descriptions of and create the ambience of a situation in order to set the characters in it and then tell a story that they've made up. Uh, I see these paintings as being exactly the same kind of a uh, process. Uh, if I am if I am making images from memory, I am automatically um, only remembering the stuff that's most important to me. 
and therefore there is a specific specificity about them that would not be present if I was uh, trying to deal with everything that's in a photograph or anything like that. Uh, and I think it's rather uh, important to the characteristics of, characteristics of how these paintings look. They are a, uh, a way that I can, with license, use uh, that image as sort of a metaphor for the fecundity of life. If you uh, go to a place uh, where there are real concentrations of uh, birds or other animals, uh, such as Horicon, uh National Wildlife Refuge here in Wisconsin, you realize that these paintings are really quite empty compared to what can be present. So, uh, but there's just no point in painting, you know, that many thousands of things. And so I try very hard to allude to the uh, uh, numbers of things that should be in our surrounding us in our lives. Um, the uh, exact detail of all of these things is very important to me. Uh, you think about the vegetation and so forth. That, that, well, there's a difference. The birds are often very detailed and precise, and the animals are detailed and precise, and they are all things that are appropriate for the northern landscape they like to paint. They, they shouldn't be there if they could be there. The vegetation, I, I try to, I, I'm sort of forced to refer to it in a general way rather than a um, specific detail of each things of each you know plant and so forth but I will use uh, photographs to uh, help me understand what a bird's wings look like in flight or to remember what the um, exact uh, uh, shape and characteristics characteristics of something like let's say an Indian pipe is but um, that's you know the, decide where to put them and how to use them and so forth first and then refer to references if I need to. The titles have become an interesting issue and I, I look at them as being a, an element of... I, I started doing them, looking at them as being an element of mystery that would complement the mystery in the paintings. Uh, and that uh, interest was uh, generated by the fact that there are so many Indian names here in Wisconsin and the upper Midwest and probably across the whole country. And everybody is always wondering what that name means. So it's a built-in uh, fascination. And when I was traveling in the, uh, in the woods up there, up in Quantico and so forth, the, a lot of these places had names that were just about unreadable and impronounceable, and the few of them that I've really gotten under control, like Windy Goose to Guan Lake, uh, I'm very proud of. <laughs> and at one point, I was painting these paintings that are real direct uh, landscape type paintings, and I was thinking, you know what, you know, I can call this thing, you know, la landscape painting with lake, or some other such thing. And it got to the point where it seemed that would really, really, really be boring. And I decided to make them allude to specific things, the way the paintings allude to specific uh, experiences, and started naming them, you know, like there's a painting called Windy Goose to go on, like, even though it's there, it's not that lake at all. Uh, and um, after liking that, and liking that extra mystery, I started uh, scouring my maps of the country and finding other names that looked really interesting and would be mystifying, uh, mystifyingly difficult to read or understand and started calling things that and then uh, ran out of names on that map and got more maps and finally got U.S. Geological Survey maps of the whole you know damn area up there and I started to run out of names and about that time, I had become very good friends with the man who's the uh, directory of uh, Indian studies at the university that I was teaching at, and he uh, saw these and thought he could help me. And he gave me, he loaned me a copy of a, a lexicon that uh, Father Baraga, a early Catholic uh, missionary, uh, created when he was uh, uh, working up in, in southern Ontario and Minnesota and so forth. And this book is about 25 pounds heavy and, you know, has a million words in it. And I was with that able to find words that looked good and had meaning somehow appropriate to the painting. And I uh, started naming paintings out of that book. Uh, I have since discovered that um, all a person has to do now is take that word and put it in Google. <laughs> and the, and the, and the uh, meaning comes out. And here I thought I was hiding that nobody would ever find it, but now it's 
I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> the frames have become a major part of the paintings, and um, they uh, are part of a long derivation. I'm of the generation that uh, grew up with abstract expressionist paintings being framed either with duct tape or something around the edges, and that was it, just to cover the seams or the staples, or else a simple s strip of wood or something that was, uh, I don't even know why they bothered to put it on there. But that was that was just the way we all did it, and it just seemed so easy that it was you know you could save a lot of money that way. And in time, uh, I began to realize that there are shortcomings to that, uh, particularly after doing things like looking at uh, Dutch paintings in museums, uh, these you know intense black things with all this architectural detail on them, thing, and finding them to be very beautiful, and they added a lot of uh, content and context to the paintings. And I began to be jealous of that, and uh, started to remember the uh, things like the knotty pine uh, uh, paneling in the old cabins that I was in the northern Wisconsin and stuff, and how much I enjoyed the look and texture of that stuff, and the and all the nicks and scratches, and spilled whiskey and whatever on the walls. And I uh, thought, well, it'd be interesting for these kind of paintings if they had that, you know, a referential uh, product on the outside similar to, uh, related to the content in the inside. And I simultaneously was, of course, interested in things like uh, Scandinavian furniture with painting all over it, you know, rose modeling and things. And I started to uh, find it enjoyable to put some of that stuff on those frames and see what it would look like. It's become a situation where I can um, now, it's, it's a terrifying thing, and it's very difficult to do, but I do it because it's, I try to make a story on the outside of the painting that somehow complements what's on the inside and maybe can uh, speak in a different language that I wouldn't feel comfortable speaking with in the painting. Hmm. And uh, so it, it completes the painting. But it's just absurdly difficult to make two things, to make one thing out of two separate things. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think that they work, even though they're harder than hard to actually do. And um, I'm pleased with them. <laughs>